question. So, do you have what we scientifically call resting salt face syndrome? Well, we have the merch for you. <laughs> this design is probably one of my favorites, including the holy carp one, called This Is My Happy Face. Everything from the little markings on the body that look like salt shakers, and even the top part that looks like a salt shaker lid, not to mention the derpy frown, it makes it just right for those of you who keep getting told, why don't you smile? And then you could just point at your shirt and be like, this design comes in hoodies, different colors, t-shirts, also beautiful array of colors, tank tops, mugs, and yes, stickers for those of you who want to put them on your laptop. I'll leave a link for them in the description box below, so if you're interested, get your This Is My Happy Face design. It is so salty that even Salty Crafter approves. Cause when you're a grain, you come in like a hurricane. Hey greens, welcome to another My Little Pony customization, cause we all know, cute ain't good enough. In previous episodes, we've taken some of the most iconic characters and somehow turned them into questionable creatures of darkness. And in the most recent one, I actually turned a big pony, like as big as my head, into a forest spirit dragon. I'm not gonna show you the end result, you're just gonna see little snippets of me making it. But let me tell you, this last customization was so challenging. I broke the needles quite often. So I'm hoping today I will not have the same issue. I'll probably have different issues though. That's okay. As long as we don't repeat the same mistakes, it means we are learning. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm gonna be learning. I might just do the same mistakes again. That's my life now. And so today I come to you with a new set of customizable ponies. These are the most requested in the past few videos. The first one we have is Fluttershy. She was highly requested as the next customization and I do understand she's adorable, but of course we know again, what did I say at the beginning? So I'm really excited to do a really cool custom. Next we have Cheery Lee, which I know is like a sub character, but one of the things that annoys me the most about this specific toy is that the body, an entire print on it. It's how and why is there a body? I don't get it. I don't understand. It's not even that cute. No, I don't like it. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have the Freeny Rainbow Dash half pony and then half skeletal inside. I figured since we are around spooky season, this would be the perfect occasion. I don't know if I'm going to do all three, but I know for sure I will be doing Fluttershy. The rest, let's see where this video takes us. And then we'll work from there. I don't like to commit. By the way, for those of you new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, otherwise I really stock up on really sharp pointy things, I can wave them at you. So make sure you click on all notifications while you're there. With that said, time to see what we get inside. Our first victim, I mean custom, I really need to work on these habits, is Fluttershy. Fluttershy, I wanted to say that I am very excited to work with you. Oh yay, I am so looking forward to it. Because you know what we're going to do. We're going to destroy you. No! <laughs> And so as you can see, this design of Fluttershy has one leg stretched out. I have ideas for this one, more specifically because on Instagram, I asked your grains to give me theme ideas and you grains delivered. Holy moly, holy, holy car. English? The amount of awesome suggestions that you had just really inspired me. So if you're not following me on Instagram or on TikTok or on Twitter, make sure that you do. It is at Nerdy Crafter for both of these and Salty Crafter for TikTok. If you have future suggestions for future custom ponies, let me know in the comment section below. I love your theme choices. So if you have a specific pony in mind, let me know which pony and what theme. However, for Fluttershy, this one here, comment by Erosion, says poisonous creatures and I immediately got super inspired because of that stretched out leg, and you'll see why in not too long. When we think about poisonous creatures, immediately the first thing that comes to my mind are snakes. However, there are so many animals that have poison. There's even a poisonous bird called the pituit. I think I'm calling, I think I'm saying it right. I've only read it in the book, but it is a poisonous bird. There are different kinds of frogs that are venomous, toads, jellyfish, are they? Yes. We also have newts, 
And one of the most venomous is the pufferfish. Which interestingly enough, even though it is venomous, Japanese people decided, hey, we're still gonna figure a way out to eat this. So kudos to them. I think for sculpture's sake, because there is an aesthetic I have in my mind, I want to still go with the idea of a snake. And not just any snake, I'm going to try to use color shifting paint. The paint that I used in previous sculptures that actually change color based on the temperature that is touching it. Kind of like when I did the, the AirPod customization and that octopus. Yeah, that one. I'm gonna try that one. And so the first thing we do is get the hair out of the way. I find that braiding usually works the best. And we won't be changing the hair color because I have plans for that. I think that the majority of this specific customization is going to be in the paint job. However, I really did think if I wanted to change it into the color scheme of the poisonous bird. Fluttershy, go ahead and meet Sandpaper. The sandpaper is there to make sure that whatever we put on the body is going to stick, including the gesso. Once that's done, time for my favorite thing in the universe, epoxy sculpt. Epoxy sculpt is a part A and part B type of clay that when mixed together, you can sculpt with it and it turns rock hard in about six hours. Don't be fooled though, even though I am making the snake with this, it is so tricky. Think of it as kind of sculpting with bubble gum. I keep saying that I love tools with texture and this is what we can use them for. Basically these tools are amazing at giving snake and dragon type texture, not to mention fish too. Obviously, when it comes to crafting, you will definitely encounter some challenges, is what I like to call them. They're not mistakes, challenges. But this is not going to be a difficult fix. I went ahead and just remade it. Since it's a snake, it really doesn't take too long. Although technically, I could have just smushed the pieces together. I think the remake looks pretty good. And of course, I added some spikes to the sides of her head because I was thinking of a viper. Although I know they have just like this really cool one, I decided to go for many. Now that the piece is all put together, what we have to do is pray to the drying gods. Right, Burb? Uh-huh. For those of you who don't know, this is Burb. Last name, well, first name Angel, last name Burb. <laughs> Why you gotta smack me? I said, I know I messed up on your name. <laughs> No reason to snack. Uh -huh. I am innocent uh -huh. in all of this. Okay? That's rude. Oh! So let's put our hands together and pray to the drying gods. Dear drying gods of evermore, please protect my piece from cracks, droopiness, and fallen limbs. And also, Stop breaking my stuff! The next day. Here we are the next day. If my hair is messy and my shirt has more cat fur, don't judge me. How can I not hug Ramses, the most adorable, sweet kitty cat in the universe? I love him. He is my life. Look at him. So floofy, so chunky, so sweet. But so far, it seems like the drying gods have not betrayed us. My biggest fear is moving the aluminum foil over here so that the snake doesn't stick to it or that there's no crack. Let's try. I'm gonna be very gentle. Oh, oh, I didn't need to be gentle at all. Huh. Be good. The epoxy clay is definitely firm on here. I don't want to press too hard because I know my luck. Even though technically, epoxy clay is pretty firm. So this is me trying to break this piece and it is not having it. So we should be okay. I just don't want to test myself because sometimes I'd be strong. <laughs> and so my favorite time of any sculpture, well, actually the whole process is, but it is time for airbrush. For this design, I decided to make Fluttershy a pink type of snake. I'm pretty sure there's a type of snake called snow corn snake or snow pea snake. Anyways, you see it on the screen. So since her hair is pink, I wanted to give her that rockin' snake look, but in pink. I was so worried she was going to look like a giraffe, but I think we're okay for now. For her companion, we're going to go ahead and color it black, because for the next step, we definitely need a black base. Oosh. Whew, no damage. 
Yes, I'm keeping my hands there to make sure it doesn't fall. Before going on any further, I was really worried that I would start losing my progress, especially because this kind of paint seems to remelt once you try to put more paint on it. So I put a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear. Delightful would call it saving your progress. Now we're going to use what's called liquid crystal that was sent to me by Solar Color Dust. And this is a heat activated color changing paint. It really is best used when we use an airbrush. Best used? Best seen. Best results are with an airbrush. <laughs> And don't be fooled, it does take anywhere between, I would say, four to eight coats, depending on your surface. For the eyes, I decided to go a little bit of a 90s Avril Lavigne extra mascara and eyeliner type look. I wanted her grungy, and that's why you can see that I'm cutting up quite a bit of hair. And I'm using tacky glue to keep it in place. I'm thinking punk rock, again, 90s type grunge. I debated if I wanted to give her bangs, but I'm like, nah. And er, me, good. Here she is. I love her so much. At first I was like, nah, her mascara is too much. But I'm like, no, you know what? This is the aesthetic I'm going for. And she looks so badass. I can't believe we transformed Fluttershy into this, but you know what time it is? Time to test out the color change on the snake. And as you can see, we start off with a black base and it is heat sensitive. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, that is so cool. So wherever we put heat, the colors change. Look at that. Oh, that is so pretty. Look at that. Ta-da! Next we have... Oh, it worked. Cheery Lee. I know Cheery Lee isn't one of the most popular ponies out there. Actually, she, she definitely isn't because this was on discount for $5. You know it's bad if you're a discount pony. We're gonna take care of Cheery Lee and turn her into something that we all love because of darkness. Or maybe not. Actually, I'll let you know what theme I have is for this one. But before that, let's see what we get inside. And also for some reason inside the box, there looks to be crumbs. Is that a crumb on the inside right there? I'm not sure. Oh no, grains. This print is worse than I thought. Listen, it's textured. Hear that? Whereas on the other side, you don't hear anything. This side? Okay, we get it. We get it. It's textured. So my guess is that they needed to make this part here textured in order for the ink to hold on. That is just so weird. You're calling me weird. You're talking to a pony toy. Oi! Don't call me out like that. I don't like it. Looks like the tables have turned. Wow. Okay. That doesn't work cheerily. Interestingly enough, although there were some really superb recommendations on Instagram, one of them really stood out to me, which is, yep, you see it on the screen, couch potato, suggested by Tia Pessy. I really love the idea of doing a couch potato style, but it's going to be kind of a cutesy type couch potato. Look at me. I said, look at me. I'm going to make it so that this character feels more authentic, but I, I'm not sure if I want to keep the color. Maybe, maybe not. Most likely, maybe yes. We'll keep the color. I really want to see what I'm up against when it comes to the texture on this pony and if it's something absolutely atrocious and if I need to correct it with more clay. But in order to see what it looks like underneath, pure acetone. Many of you grains were absolutely upset that I didn't use acetone in previous unmakeovers, but from my experience, more often than not, we don't really need it to remove the face. This one is fancy. Look how fancy this one is. So apparently you just need to pump it here. Oh, 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 look at that. And now it's full of acetone. Oh, it smells like nail polish remover. All right, let's see if this works. I'm not sure if it's supposed to work immediately or after a few seconds. Let's wait and see. And the answer is no. So my guess is this is not something we can remove with acetone. Good for us, yay. So maybe we'll wait just a little longer. And here it is after one minute and the answer is no. I don't even know where this pink is from anymore. Although, oh, oh, oh my God. Okay, okay. <laughs> So even though we can't acetone it off, it seems like I can just sandpaper it right off. No problem. But it is leaving quite a bit of scratch marks. Well, that's a lot of powder. I need to get my mask. I got this. <laughs> Last time, many of you greens said I could just open this like a zipper. Let's see if that's true. No. Oh, no. You greens were right. So for those of you who want to say, Jakey, you're doing it wrong. Yes, in this case, yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Punk rock pony time. So even
even though technically I could continue sanding it and removing the rest of the print, I figured it's really not that necessary. At least not for what I want to do, especially since it is pretty flat. So for this design, I'm taking my epoxy sculpt again, because you know, we can't really bake a pony. <gasps> what? Not, not in this way, like don't, grains. What I meant is not that, not, not in the dark way. Don't go into the dark side. Some places are okay to be in the dark side, but we're not baking no ponies. As you can see, in order to get my pieces as flat as possible, I am using my pasta machine, because that's my favorite thing ever. So I decided that for this couch potato pony, we're going to give her an oversized t-shirt and pajama pants. I debated if I wanted to make the t-shirt a v-neck or just rounded, and it seemed like rounded probably was the better idea. And then for the pants, I figured they would be also pajama pants, but the only thing that's going to flare out would be the bottom, so we definitely don't need to change too much as though it's her own body. So they're gonna be kind of like tights. In all honesty, one of my favorite outfits really are pajama pants and an oversized t-shirt. I feel like especially nowadays, I am almost living in them, I would say 99, 99% of the time. I know I hesitated because I was like, is it really 95? It's probably not 95% because I really don't go anywhere. But winter is right around the corner and some of the coziest nights from my childhood really have to do with just having a hot chocolate and binge watching TV shows. I love binge watching shows. So if you do have a favorite show that is binge worthy, let me know in the comment section below. I am so curious what you grains are watching. And of course we can't be a couch potato without having some potato chips. Or as you UK grains call it, crisps, right? <laughs> Here she is so far, now we have to wait before um, before we paint, so you know what that means. Put your hands together and pray to the drying gods. <laughs> Dear drying gods of Eremore. It's the break of my stuff! And so for Cheery Lee, our frumpy couch potato pony, I technically could have gone the easy route and just kept her pink, but I figured might as well change her color. So I'm going with a bluish type, like a cloudy day on the ocean type blue. Oh no, I did not mean to color the hair. We'll figure this out later. And since I think I have quite a bit of experience when it comes to being a couch potato clothing type style person, although I wish I did have more time to be a couch potato. The aesthetic I'm going for is very similar to my own clothing style, which is kind of cute pajama pants and just a very comfortable t-shirt. And here she is. I definitely love the vibe. It's so this year. I really would have loved to give her a different hairstyle, but I really can't think of any other that wouldn't just be her hair down. I guess a bun just shows extra coziness because you just don't want your hair in the way while you're binge watching things. And I think if I had to redo it, I would maybe choose a lighter blue because this is, this is quite the dark blue. Regardless, she looks pretty cozy. Unfortunately, we did not have a chance or time to do our adorable rainbow dash. So if you have a cool theme suggestion for this one, let me know in the comments. And here they are. Let me know which one is your favorite. Is it couch potato pony or venomous creature type pony? I'm kind of torn between the two for different reasons, but if I really have to choose, I would say couch potato pony because she's a mood. And somehow she reminds me of my sister Sika because pooped. If you want to watch the previous customization, make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch a video that is me pretty much bashing products, <laughs> make sure you check down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.